This is the fourth critique of an essay for a lesson before dying. And I'm going to leave, leave the name on Terence's essay here. Because for one thing, I don't really have that much to critique about it. Uh, it's, it's a good job. I want to, to point that out, say that right, right up front. Uh, I'm just clear that the ink here and, and go into into here. Let's um, take a look at, at what he has there. First of all, he has a, a good a good use of title here. A lesson for dying, Statist uh, stylistically compelling. So right away you can tell that his title has has led to uh, the writing style, and he'll be talking about that in his essay. Bring it back over here. Ernest K.J. Gaines' book, A Lesson for Die. I mean, I'm glad to see that he has um, italicized the title of the novel. And he starts out very nicely, and it uses a good hook here. Ernest Jane's, Jane's book, although you don't even need to, to put the word book in there. Ernest Jane Gaines, A Lesson Before Dying, is a beautiful and profound story thanks to his use of effect, effective use of stylistic elements. So Gaines' most well-used elements are his use of colloquialism, historical context, and symbolism. Uh, there's a there could be a more effective way of using that. So instead of saying well-used, let's uh, use instead the word uh, effective. Some of Gaines' most effective elements are his use of colloquialism, historical context, and symbolism. And already I can I can see that. You know, we're again, we're caught in the, what I call the, the grade 9, grade 10 trap. That is, it has to be a, a five-paragraph essay because the elements are laid out there in, the, um, in the, the thesis statements. And because you've laid out those three elements, it tells me you're going to have three paragraphs that will prove your thesis statements. And that's all the room you have. Well, okay, since I've already critiqued that before, then let's move on from that. Improvements, there aren't many, but I, but the uh, two topic sentences for the first first two uh, body paragraphs, those can definitely use some some improvement here. For instance, the the first uh, uh, topic sentence to begin, the story takes place in the deep southern United States after uh, a bit after the Second World War. Yeah, that's true. But what that sentence says is all you're going to talk about is how it takes place in the Deep South a little bit after World War II. That's not really what you want to get at. You want to, you want to say in that topic sentence something about the, the setting in the Deep South of the United States post-World War II Leads to uh, leads to a distinct flavor in the book, something like that. In other words, you take this statement of fact, but you lead it into a certain direction. I'm just drawing an arrow here, just to just to make the point that you want to lead in a certain direction with your topic sentence. It, so it, your t topic sentence points back to your thesis statement, but it also leads forward to prove something else. Let's take a look at the next topic sentence. And there's a lot of good stuff in, in here where Terence makes a point of, about the colloquialisms and such. And I'll, I'll have the same, the exact same criticism here. Don't have to go on too, uh, too much further. In addition, many references to real history are made in this novel. Well, at this, at, it's at this point where I use the, the nasty teacher sentence, yeah, so what? And that's what it comes down to. So what? What is it that you're trying to say here? So instead of doing a, a, a simple statement, many references to real history are made in the novel, you want to say in that first sentence, references to, to real history mean what? Well, the point that Terence goes on to in the paragraph is to say how the added power, how the added power of, to these 
uh, historical references, for instance, to, to Jackie Robinson and so on, uh, that lends a, a, not only power to it, you know, Jackie Robinson as uh, a major contributor to civil rights, the civil rights movement, as the first black player in, the, in Major League Baseball, offering hope, a uh, symbol of hope for many uh, African Americans. Uh, as well as Joe Lewis, Joe, Joe Lewis, uh, when he when he fought against the German uh, German fighter Max Schmeling, and so on, where Joe Lewis was not only uh, not only carried the torch for uh, for Americans but for Black Americans in particular, and Terence then then goes on. Don't think I didn't didn't notice this, Terence. He goes on to. You find a quote from Langston Hughes talking about the significance of uh, of Joe Lewis as a Black American hero, and that lends uh, gets across the point using the secondary source secondary source from Hughes' book "I Wonder as I Wonder" gets across the point of the power of this historical figure of Joe Lewis. Terence. Uh, comes around and does a, a better job, a much better job in the final body paragraph, where he says, "Finally, Gaines uses many powerful symbols in his story to really make his points powerful." Okay? The only, the only correction there, perhaps, is you use the, the word "powerful," powerful, you know, twice in the uh, in the same sentence there. Want to use uh, vary your sent your word patterns, your diction, so as to make your sentence more powerful. Clear out the ink here. Go back in there, and a, a lot of good, uh, good, legitimate uh, citations here. The word "hog" embodies the past. Uh, white beliefs that that blacks are, are unintelligent, uh, subhumans. And a nice way of, of putting that. Okay? And then in concluding, uh, concluding uh, paragraph there, with Gaines' beautiful writing style, he employs colloquialism, historical facts, and powerful symbolism to craft a left and lesson for dying, should be italicized there, into a masterpiece. Gaines has the ability to paint profound images in readers' minds by using his master writing techniques. Uh, a little brief. A little brief and not particularly original because you you simply restate what you already said there, uh, but went on to to take a little bit further to say that the book is a, a master a masterpiece and to use imagery paint profound images in readers' minds. Again, let's watch out <coughs> watch out for uh, redundancy masterpiece. Masterful. Maybe that was intentional. Uh, trying to use some sort of a uh, parallelism, uh, alliteration type type of thing. But be careful of using different forms of the same words there. Uh, a perfect example of the works cited page. Perfect. It has his primary source. Primary source just means the work that you're writing about, and then of course have a secondary source. Langston Hughes' book, I Wonder as I Wander, An Autobiographical Journey. And with that, I'll say it's a pretty darn good job that uh, Terence did for his uh, analysis, his essay analysis on A Lesson Before Dying.